Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I want to take a look at the new altered book that I'm working on. It's very much in progress. None of the layouts are finished at all, but I thought that might be a good opportunity to show and tell, talk about what goes into building up the layers on a page, turning static elements into a layout with a story or something like that. So this is a vintage book. And as I said, I've got, uh, I've been working on this book for six weeks. I still have five layouts that I haven't even started. So it's gonna be another month or two. But I am, however, really happy with how this layout is starting. Oops. Um, this took a whole afternoon just messing around with different elements, but I am happy with how it is turning out. I do need your help though. I have a really uh, important question that's been bugging me for a long time. And it's about this. How much black and white engraving is too much? I like black and white. That's why I work with old paper. But is this too, too much? What I mean is this, I've got another similar engraving of these roses, and I really, really like how that's gonna look when it's the background for a page. But would it be even better if I added a little bit of coloring, a little bit of tinting by hand? Here's another one where I've done that. I've started adding some yellow to these daffodils, and I will probably go and add different yellows because I, I am happy with how that's turning out. Here's another one where I've started to add some color. And that's all I'm gonna add. I'm not gonna do the flesh tones or anything like that. I just wanted to add a little bit of contrast with some hand tinting there. So I, I'm serious. I would be so grateful if you go, uh, let me know in the comments whether you think black and white or tinting or a little of both. Thank you. Now here, let's see, this is a page where I started with a background with some tissue paper. I am always on the lookout for printed tissue paper. Some of it can be really, really charming and it's cheap and it lasts forever. Also, when you glue it to something, a substrate, it goes translucent so that whatever's printed on it really pops, but you can still see the text underneath. Here, I also added a border with a little bit of a page for some, from some British wildflowers. It's here. And if you like that sort of thing, I use these pages a lot. I have some high-res scans on my website, and they're free, and I will put a link in the text below. You can go get those and use them in your own work. I then, after I had that background put in, I did some work with some gesso to, to blend that in and give the, the page that uh, peeling fresco look that I really, really like. The page was getting busy fast. So I had actually thought about using that because it does have the plum colors, but it, eh, it was, it's just too much. Instead, I just went with this lady who's reading a book and I gave her some wings. The purple here picks up the purple here, and then this is a little bit of both. Here on this side, this is actually a pocket. I do not know what is going to end up in the pocket when the page is finished. I'm just put that there to show that it will be something. Here, I'm pretty happy with the black and white. I'm not going to tint this, I know. Now, the background here came from a book of maths tables 
that I got at a, a flea market, a car boot sale for 50 pence, next to nothing. And I'm showing you this because, again, I want to preach the gospel of teaching yourself to look for treasure in what seems ordinary. Because I think to a lot of people, this would not have seemed very creative or inspiring. But I think it makes a terrific contrasting background there. Originally, the book of art prints that this engraving came from had a caption that made it really clear that these guys were about to be dinner to that guy. That's not really the energy that I wanted for this book. So, but I loved this engraving and I found that when I added her, it just changed the whole narrative. A few things going on here. They all have very emotive, soulful eyes. Okay. And her as well. So it almost creates a triangle from their eyes on this page. I am probably going to take a pencil and extend this branch across here to unify the page and this one across here. The fact that she is about to play a song on the violin makes it look as though she's serenading them and they are listening to her, maybe even in secret. So it goes from being prey, prey and predator to being a, a sort of an, a charming audience. I think it's got mystery to it now. Let's see, speaking of mystery, all right, everybody interprets a page, a collage layout differently. Just That's just how the narrative works. But I know that when, I'll tell you what I was thinking when I made this page. She is this delicate, beautiful, gentle young woman. And she's just thrown the cosmos over her shoulder, very casually, like that. There it goes. And she doesn't care. She, she did that. She just threw the planet over her shoulder without wrinkling her crinoline. And I just really like that. And the expression on her face as she's doing it. These fellows, however, are alarmed. Tough. Deal with it. They told her that she was mad. I am going to add some outlines throughout with charcoal to really make this page pop. This is a background. Don't know what's going there. It's a handwritten French receipt from 1868. That might be a good start. I got some ideas. We'll see. Now this is a pocket over here. And inside is a card. Again, I may change this when I get ready to finish the book. I really like this. The background came from an old family Bible and this was the page for registering marriages. There would have been a little photo here and then the information, the names of who was getting married. I really like the sepia colored flowers. And I wanted to echo that, but contrast. Well, let me put it another way. That's a busy background. There's a lot going on. And to stand up to this background, I needed something really bold. And I think that these fuchsia colored blooms just do that and again another engraving over here but she's actually pretty basic there's not a whole lot of movement going on so it does stand up well to this background i am also again thinking about hand tinting maybe every other one of these flowers or maybe these circles not sure this 
page gave me some grief because the binding just broke, snapped. So I tried mending it. You can see underneath a little bit that dark shadow is where I put in some tape. It didn't work. So there went a whole day. Then I decided to give it a, a really big shot and I had a 1920s woodblock printing Japanese on rice paper. So I just put it all the way across. It does let some of the original print and text show through and this time the binding held. Over here I have another really bold flower and I get the question almost every video where do you get your images? Well, clearly I work with a lot of vintage things um, and I can't explain more about that, but that is a different video. In this video, I thought I'd talk about where I get some of my floral images, my oversized, really bright blooms. This is called Mr. Marshall's Flower Book. And I, rem I don't remember, I got it at a secondhand store and I have used it so much, just cutting out the flowers and using those. In fact, I've used it so much that I realized I was about to run out of flowers. So here's what you do. If you find a book that you like and you know that uh, you would use more of, you can go to eBay and type in Mr. Marshall's flower book or whatever it is that you want whatever the title of the book is that you want i also do this with several vintage books and then you want to click on save save this search what that will do is then every time somebody lists a copy of the book it will you'll get an email and what that does is you can check your email and sometimes the book is going to not probably be in your budget that happens to me all the time but if you look at all of the emails all of the time, once in a while, you're going to find one that's really cheap. Buy it, put it in your library. And there you go. So I, again, use the wildflower fragments here and also inside of the arch. So we have the gold in her, her tunic, the flower and the flower and in the center of the flowers here. So that holds that page together. This is another pocket. And again, I don't know if these are what's going to end up in it, but I don't know. I, I collect none postcards, so maybe. This is the layout that I've been working on most recently. It, uh, again, I'm just going to leave this one black and white. I'm happy with that. I added a couple of borders, asymmetrical borders from handwritten letters that, uh, from 1902. The original caption here showed that what they're doing is uh, they're waiting for a couple to come out of the chapel that have just got married so they can throw rice and flowers at them. But since that caption isn't there, you can now interpret this in any way you want. We don't know what they're looking at. We only know that they are peering kind of furtively through a door and through an arch, which are always powerful images. And what's going on? I don't know. What do you think is going on? This was from a book of early 20th century botanical engravings of mushrooms. So this is a kind of weird mushroom. I turned it upside down and now it almost suggests a kind of a chandelier or a wall hanging that I think, to me, I connect in my mind with what might be inside of this mysterious old chapel. Maybe, I don't know. There we go. Like I said, I got a lot of work to do. And like I said, if you would like to get any of those uh, scans of some of the vintage paper images that I have, please go to my website. 
The link is in the text below. And while you're there, please subscribe to my monthly newsletter. It has art journal stuff, altered books, collage, mixed media, fashion, and uh, travel, lots of fun stuff and free stuff and giveaways. So please subscribe to my monthly newsletter. If you have any questions or feedback, including whether to tint or not to tint, please let me know in the comments below. We really grateful and I'd love to compare notes. So I post every Friday until next week. Please go be creative.